Hello, this is uh, Randall Root, and uh, this video is about uh, Chapter 4's exercise, 4-1. In uh, Chapter 4, there's only a single exercise, and it's really not much of an exercise, to tell you the truth. It's just really short. Um, the chapter is about going through and, and recognize the different design structures that make up a data warehouse. And Exercise 4 is about uh, documenting those uh, those design design choices. So, since um, I knew that this could be kind of chaotic if you let everybody come up with their own designs, I kind of wanted to keep people on on the rails as we went through the book. It's not real representative of a real life having to use somebody else's designs, but um, it does make the book a whole lot easier. So, sorry about the restriction, but anyway, the, the goal here was just for you to take a look at what I have come up with. Now, I've come to the conclusion that I'm never going to be able to create any perfect document. And as such, there's certain things in here that you may disagree with. Um, but, you know, that's really not the point. The point is, is how do you go through and come up with a design decision and uh, make the best doc design document you can come up with uh, so you can proceed on to actually building the data warehouse. That, that's kind of the, the over, overriding point of it. So what I'd like you to do in exercise four is, is just, to, just to take a look at what I came up with. You know, contrast it with what you may have come up with if you've made one before. If you're doing the learn by doing exercises, you will have moved on to the north wind and you'll get a chance to, to kind of fill in things a little bit more on your own. Uh, once again, though, to make the exercises actually work, I've kind of kept you on rails. Um, still, you'll have plenty of opportunities in, in your real life to kind of create your own. And I'm hoping these two examples will give you kind of a, a leg up on that process. So the way it works is you read through the exercise and you go and you find the, the BI solution I've put together. And you're focusing on the, the, the data warehouse. So I'd be looking at what I came up with as far as starts off with a particular data type and ends with a particular data type starts off with a, a particular table name or column name and ends with a particular table name or column name so for example the sales table I'm going to change to fact sales and the column ord num is going to be called order number and so on so for each of the columns that were in the original database, I'm going to make a decision about their design. Certain things I'm going to go ahead and uh, do are like, um, let's see here, what do I have? Well, I might actually go through and take titles and uh, publishers and put them into a single table. And normally, in my life, I would normally do that. But I've made a design decision just so I have kind of a an example of a, how you work with a snowflake dimension to keep it separate. So even though publishers is really a part of the titles dimension, I'm keeping it in a separate table called dim publishers. Again, just to kind of show you how to work with snowflake. And um, this document actually reflects that. So it's just a matter of going through and noticing those details and the details about things like I've uh, uh, start off with uh, order number being bar car 20 and uh, store name is being 40 and title is being 80 and you know and so on and I just took you know the kind of a, a different approach I simplified a little bit for example I'm gonna go ahead and just make them 50 100 200 500 as far as their size I'm not gonna go ahead and, and dink around with 20s and 40s and 18s and whatever else they came up with the exception the rules are if it's being used for like an identifier I um, I might go ahead and um, uh, make it smaller so that there's a limit as far as how many numbers for example the uh, title ID is being used as an identifier so they're using kind of an old-fashioned smart key and not really the recommended approach but anyway I'll go ahead and keep that however I'll um, I'll upgrade to like Unicode, the N stands for Unicode. And I'm going to also add in a surrogate key. And I've noted that I'm adding in that surrogate key. So 
again, the idea of Chapter 4 is to give you an overview of the design process that um, takes place as you're going through and designing a data warehouse. And it pre uh, prepares you for Chapter uh, 5, in which case we actually go through and, and make the data warehouse. And that is where the next video will be at. So this is uh, it for this video. Hopefully you found it of use. Um, and I'll see you in the next chapter.